Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, so today's video is going to be a little bit different because I decided to try my hand at depotting some of my palettes that I really don't use or reach for. I really want to try and get some more use out of my older palettes and so here we go. I'm going to try and depot. So I did grab just some basic tools that you typically would use to depot <laughs> some shadows. Got some alcohol for repressing, some paper towels and you know just basic tools butter knives depotting tools exacto knife things like that I also put down a towel on my beauty desk of course because I don't want to destroy it but here I am just <laughs> going in like a rookie attacking this palette now this is my Valentine palette um I've had this palette for about two years I would say I got it Valentine's Day before last and this palette proved to be a bit tricky now as you can see with the construction of this palette they really really glued down that top plastic piece that holds the shadows in place but there's just a small amount of glue that's actually holding it into each tray so I found it really difficult working with <laughs> this palette trying to get these shadows out without crumbling some of the mats but I did notice as I was depotting this palette that some of the mats were softer than the other mats and those were the ones that really gave me issue. Now I know that a lot of people go in with placing their palettes on top of a warming plate or on a pot of steaming water different things like that so I decided I was gonna try that if all else failed because I really didn't want to go in <laughs> using heat but it did get quite a bit frustrating trying to get some of these shadows out now that one purple shadow that you see in the corner that one did not want to budge and that was the softest shadow in this palette so I did decide to go ahead and try a heat method using my blow dryer. So I just kind of placed a bit of heat on the back of the palette, maybe for about 10 seconds to see if that would help at all. And honestly, I don't really feel like it helped me that much, maybe a little, but not enough to make that much of a difference. The more I worked with the palette and wiggled with it, that's the easier it became but this palette I think was really difficult because the glue they used was just impossible now I knew I was gonna have some casualties with some shadows as you can see I just kind of picked those up placed them to the side so that I could deal with them later because I really didn't have issue with it this is not a palette I'm in love with or anything and I knew that I could just repress it with a bit of alcohol so I just kind of took the shadow out tapped it onto a paper towel and placed it to the side no big deal I had maybe about four of those to do by the time I finished struggling with this palette but I will say out of all the palettes that I depotted on this day <laughs> this one was the absolute worst so I'm kind of glad I started out with this one because it was the most difficult to depot um, occasionally some of the shadows would just pop out on their own after me maneuvering it a bit but other ones took a little bit of prying so yeah this palette was a bit tricky and after doing this palette I'm a little bit hesitant to try and depot any Morphe palettes but I have seen people successfully depot those easily by using a bit of heat so we'll see how that goes in the future but <laughs> You know, this is by no means any type of depotting tutorial for you guys or trying to teach you guys how to do it. I'm just learning how to do it, trial and error, and I don't have that great of patience when it comes to things like these. You know, I kind of just like to get in there and try and work it out. So we'll see how long this lasts. <laughs> but I'm really, really glad that I did go through with this depotting of this palette because it just makes me see that there's so many shadows different colors that I could be using in my eye looks that I just never would grab because you know I don't use three four five palettes whenever I sit down to create an eye look 
So here I'm just going in with those broken shadows or those damaged shadows and I'm just kind of repressing them with my fingers or that pink one I actually decided to just toss. But I'm just going in, you know, uh, breaking up all of the shadows so that it'll turn to dust again. Placing it back in the pan, you know, pressing it in with my fingers. And then I'm just resetting it with a bit of alcohol so that it can, you know, shape back into the pan and just dry and you know, I've never had any issue when I do these this with my shadows. They usually work just fine after that. So I went ahead and just repressed the ones that I really, really wanted to keep and let them dry and it wasn't an issue. Now, I didn't know exactly how many palettes I was going to depot <laughs> during this sitting, but I did grab a couple of my old face candy palettes that I never ever reached for because there's some really pretty shades in these palettes. So I decided to go ahead and, you know, pop those out so that I can get some use out of these shadows as well. And as you can see, this is a cardboard palette. Now, what I didn't realize is that. I didn't even have to cut that apart because these pans are already magnetic, which is really, really cool. I mean, for such an expensive brand to already send out pans or palettes that are magnetized, I think is really cool. So once I figured that out, all I had to do was just go in with my X-Acto knife and dig these shadows out. And... I knew that I wouldn't have to add a magnetic sticker on the back because they were already ready to go. So now I'm going in doing the same thing with my Sahara palette, just popping those out and, you know, getting rid of the shell of the palette so that I can place it in my magnetic one. Now with these shadows, I really didn't care as far as the names go, so I just kind of Put a little abbreviation for the palette so I would at least know what palette it came out of. So I would know that's the Sahara palette and then the other shadows are from the Amazonia palette. Um, I just plan on using these depotted shadows really to assist me in creating different eye looks, not so much for tutorial purposes. Now, I was kind of hesitant to depot this Wild palette from Face Candy only because the packaging is so cute. But once again, it is a palette that I never reach for and there are some really pretty shadows in this palette. So, I kind of got over the packaging thing and went ahead and just popped those out, especially knowing that they're already magnetized. I knew it was going to be super easy for me to depot that one as well. So once again, I just went in and abbreviated the palette name on the back of these shadows so I'll know what palette that these came from as well. I really find that I enjoy the depotting process, not so much the actual depotting just because of the fact that you know you can damage your shadows but I really, really like the fact that I can arrange my shadows in a color scheme that I like. Sometimes when I get a palette, the way that they place the shadows in the palette, it can be very uninspiring and also be a reason why I don't reach for that palette because the color scheme is just crazy. But with doing it this way and having these shadows in a nice magnetic palette all together, I really feel more inspired to create looks because I have more options to choose from in the same palette. So this is just the Carity palette that I am depotting. As you can see, it's a cardboard palette as well. I was going through swatching this um, because <laughs> I was just going to trash the whole palette. I really don't feel like this formula is that great, but I decided to go ahead and just give the shadows one more shot. They might be 
decluttered on my next declutter but we'll see so for this Oakalon natural palette this is another palette that I purchased from shop hush it is a dupe I believe for a Kat Von D palette but never used this palette and I've had this for over a year at least and there's some really pretty shadows in here so I find that I kind of like depotting the cardboard palettes because you can just kind of dig through and once you pull through the layers and kind of get a lot of the extra cardboard and paper off it makes it a little bit easier to get to the shadows you know you can just kind of peel back and peel back until you get a nice flat board that the cardboard or that the shadows are glued to so I kind of like depotting these type of palettes what I don't like about depotting these is it's very hard to get glue with cardboard off of the back of your pans I mean that stuff sticks like crazy I found myself using a nail file <laughs> tweezers all kind of stuff trying to get that glue off of the back of those shadows with that cardboard attached to it. it's really annoying because when you go in to stick the magnetic stickers on the back of your pans it doesn't like to stick to that cardboard you know if it was like plastic or even the glue just the glue it sticks okay but once you get that paper on there it's kind of hard to get the magnetic stickers to stick so I tried my hardest to get all of that cardboard and glue off of the back of those shadows so that I wouldn't have any issues with placing the magnetic stickers on before I put them in my pan or before I put them in my palettes. Now these shadows, there's some really nice ones in here. I love that gray silver shade. Also, there's a really pretty like burgundy purple type shade, a gorgeous gold shade. So it's shadows like these that are the reason why I really want it to depot because, you know, these are shadows that I could be using that I never would pick up. Okay, so it's time for me to start placing them in my palette. I did order an empty palette from Amazon because they deliver really quickly to me. I also ordered some of these magnetic stickers. I think I got a pack for a pack of a hundred of them for maybe about 10 bucks or something like that. And they send you a couple of tools in there as well. And they give you two shapes, round ones as well as the small square ones which I don't really care for but you know if you have square pans you need square stickers so this is the palette that I purchased to fill up today I love these adept palettes the two-sided ones they're just so nice convenient they're really large so you can put a lot of shadows in there and they're really pretty as well so what I want to do here is just go in place a magnetic you know sticker or sticking magnet <laughs> whatever you want to call it on the back of each of these shadows for this palette as you can see I just wrote the name Carity on the back um I don't even know if that palette had names for each shadow probably but I really don't care so I just wrote Carity on the back of there so I could know what palette those came from and I'm just organizing those in the bottom half of the palette I wanted to go ahead and also add the Oakalon natural shadows on that same side since there was some color in those shadows as, or as in that palette as well. Sorry you guys, I can't talk today. So yeah, I'm just adding the square ones along the bottom, writing the name of the palette on there also and just kind of lining it up and it kind of gets tricky when you're trying to organize a palette with round um shadows along with square shadows because i really don't like that that's kind of like <laughs> i don't know if it's my add or something that kicks in but i don't like to see circles and squares together so i guess i'm just gonna have to get used to that or buy separate palettes for my square ones and separate palettes for my round ones because yeah i really don't like them together but 
I wanted to go ahead and now I'm going back with the Valentine shadows as well as those two face candy palettes, the Amazonia and the Saharan. And I'm placing some of those shadows along um, side the natural palette shadows and I was just kind of sitting there trying to figure out what would be the vet best visually pleasing lineup because I do want my palettes to not just be all over the place I want them to be visually appealing to me so that it inspires me to use them so this is what I came up with initially just for now now I'm going in with the shadows from the Valentine palette, all the reds and pinks, and just putting all the mattes on one side and the shimmers on the other. And as you can see, I saved a lot of the warm toned shadows to go along with this side of the palette, you know, because it just kind of feels like it should go with the reds. And so I'm just lining all of those up and I think I had enough in this palette for everything except one shadow, which is kind of frustrating because I could not fit that one shadow in there anywhere. So, but it's okay. I just uh, placed it in my other palette. So this is a palette that I had already filled up a week or so before. All of those square pans are from my C color palettes. I don't know if you're familiar with C color, but they do a lot of dupe shadows or dupe palettes for like Jeffree Star, Laura Lee, and stuff like that. So I just depotted all of those because I never use those. But these are just some extra shadows that I had already previously depotted. And I just wanted to show you guys a couple of those palettes and shadows that I am working on, just kind of grouping them together so I know what's what. So. Anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me in my first depotting video. Hope you had a good time and I will see you later. Toodles!